Hi, this is uh, Matthew Robert Payne, and this is uh, a teaching called, uh, like a conversation called uh, Wisdom from Beyond the Veil. And I'm currently uh, interviewing, uh, speaking to Princess Diana, Mary Magdalene, Michael Jackson, and Prince Philip, who just recently died. We're discussing uh, some uh, questions that I had about the faith uh, for us to discuss. We're gonna, going to have like a round table of uh, discussion around uh, these questions. We're going to do at least two questions uh, in part one. Uh, there's a part one to this and uh, in part one, we just covered uh, two questions. So I'm not sure how many we'll cover this time, but I, I don't want to make uh, each section more than an hour and a half. Um, so um, uh, you may understand that Jesus uh, talked to uh, Elijah and Enoch on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, uh, if the Holy Spirit initiates a conversation, uh, it's not necromancy. Uh, if you consult a medium, to speak to the dead, then that's necromancy. But if the Holy Spirit arranges someone who's alive in heaven uh, to come and visit you and speak to you, uh, that's uh, something that's allowed in circum certain circumstances. And it's encouraging and edifying uh, for you and for others if people are party to it. Uh, so the disciples were party to Jesus talking to Elijah and Enoch. So sometimes someone can be party to one of these experiences. Uh, so that's all I'll say about that. Uh, I'm uh, in good spirits. You can hear the birds outside. Uh, they're in good spirits. Um, I'm in good spirits. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from my special guests. And um, I reviewed part one and I was just absolutely amazed. Uh, most of all, amazed at Prince Philip at uh, his, uh, his knowledge of spiritual things and his perspective. And, uh, and uh, so uh, we'll go on uh, to question three. Um, who should benefit from our faith? Uh, who should benefit from our faith as a Christian? Uh, so Mary Magdalene wants to speak first and uh, I'll mention, I'll try and mention uh, who's going to speak each time. Sometimes I may say that uh, uh, Mary Magdalene wants to speak and sometimes I'll just say this is Mary Magdalene. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to follow on and understand who's speaking each time. So Mary Magdalene says, you know, uh, the, the, the Christian life is meant to be an outward life, uh, just like... Uh, just like a dry cleaners or, or uh, yeah, just like a dry cleaners or a shopping center is, is focused on the other people. A dry cleaners uh, wouldn't succeed uh, if they didn't have clients uh, and a shopping center, like a shopping mall uh, wouldn't be successful if they didn't have visitors. And um, the Christian life uh, isn't, supposed to be just like a monk's life uh, uh, you know certain monks uh, you know study the gospel and and have a relationship with Jesus and Jesus uh, can be uh, very content uh, having a relationship uh, with uh, with people just individually but uh, the the average Christian uh, and uh, that I shouldn't really say the average Christian, but um, the particular Christian, uh, the average Christian uh, should have like an outward expression of their faith. Um, it doesn't need to be uh, like Princess Diana was saying. It, it doesn't need to be overtly, Jesus told me to do this for me. Jesus told me to do that. Jesus told me to tell you this. Jesus just wants us to be light. And I, I imagine 
that many people uh, don't understand. They, they read that in Matthew 5, uh, you are the light on the hill, a city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand and it gives light to the whole house and people see your good works and give glory to God. They see that and they say, well, how? How can you be a lamp? How can uh, you uh, be a light? Uh, what what are practical uh, steps? What what are practical ways? Can can you you talk about uh, how to be expressive in your faith? How how to be living this outward life? Matthew's got a book called. Uh, Ex uh, influencing your world for Christ and he, he goes into this subject but Jesus calls you to be light he calls you to be not light that exposes sin in people not a person who's pointing the finger at people and judging people but Light in the sense that you walk into a dark room, you turn on the light and you can see and it's not oppressive. Um, in, in this world where people are hating each other and people are envious and jealous, just being a person in, in this world that doesn't say bad things about people and isn't envious and isn't jealous and isn't competing and isn't uh isn't going after all the things of the world and trying to keep up with the joneses just just being a person who who is happy and content uh, can make a major difference can you can have a, a major influence on people that you're mixing with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in your workplace if you're known as a person who doesn't enter into gossip. Whenever uh, they're talking about one of the workers in the place that people don't like, uh, for you to say, excuse me, I, I don't um, participate in this. I'll just uh, go off now. I'll, I'll do something else. And you can rest assured as soon as you walk out of earshot, They'll be talking about you and complaining about you. Oh, he thinks he's holier than thou. But you can be sure uh, if you've got a reputation for doing that, that people that are broken, people that are going through a hard time, they're going to come to you. They, they're going to realise that you're a loving person. And there's so many needs uh, in this world, a, a way to uh, live outward is um, addressing needs. Uh, you may uh, hear that uh, it's someone's anniversary, buying uh, that woman some flowers for her anniversary. Uh, um, you, you may hear that uh, someone's got strains in their marriage because of any number of reasons but one of the women at your work may confide in you that her relationship isn't going too well. You, you could get a voucher for a restaurant for a meal and tell her that she should go out on a date night with her husband. Uh, I guess many things in the kingdom come down to money and how free you are with money. A uh, hundred dollars uh, given to that woman on, on a restaurant voucher uh, will do a mighty good. It, it's, uh, it'll do more good than a couple of pairs of jeans for $100. The, the effect that it would have on, on your work friend is amazing. And uh, the, the place that it places you in her mind and in her memory is it just can't be just can't have a dollar figure put to it uh, 
I guess what I'm saying is get your eyes off yourself. Stop trying to satisfy your own needs. Stop trying to satisfy yourself. Um, if you reach a stage where you're content with this life, if you reach a stage where you're happy uh, with your relationship with Jesus, when you're happy with your work, you're happy with your marriage and, and you're happy. If you can reach a stage where you're content, uh, then you can live more of an abundant life, uh, more of an expressive, self-loving, self-laying self down your life sort of uh, servanthood life. Um, Jesus said that anyone who wants to become great must become the servant of all. And um, Jesus is the best demonstration of that. Uh, he's got the greatest name in heaven. He's got the greatest name in the universe. Uh, uh, he, he, he is the most important person in heaven, but he's always serving people. Jesus is, Jesus is forever a servant. Uh, he'll ask you questions and they'll be deep and amazing questions, but he's looking for an answer of a revelation you just got the day before. And he's asking you for the answer of a question and you're just coming on to a revelation about a certain aspect of, of the spiritual life. And his question sparks your ability to start to talk about what you, you're just coming into as, as wisdom. And he knows that you were thinking about that the day before. And that's where his question comes. But his attitude is one of a servant. You don't have to tell Jesus anything. Jesus is aware. Jesus is the biggest mystic. Jesus, uh, you know, ha has so much wisdom and knowledge and revelation. So you don't have to tell him. You don't have to uh, share your revelation uh, with him for him to be added to in knowledge because he is all knowledge and he is all wisdom so i guess what i'm saying in what i'm saying is be available to people be be someone who will ask questions be someone who has answers and solutions be a person who's open with your money and expressive and any, any time you can spend some money uh, to bless a person, take the opportunity to spend the money and bless a person. Learn how to serve humanity. Learn how to be a servant. Learn how to humble yourself and lay down your life and, and bless people. You're, you're in a, a lifespan which seems long to you. It, it seems like a long time, 80 years on earth or 70 years on earth, or a normal human lifespan. It seems a long time to you, but in eternity where one day, in, one day on earth is three weeks in heaven, there's so much time in heaven. And really a human life isn't the amount of isn't a huge amount of time compared to eternity. I've been in heaven for two thousand earth years. And I've been going deeper and deeper and deeper into God and into the wisdom of God and the biblical wisdom. And I know so much, it, it, it takes uh, humility, it takes patience, 
to actually use Matthew's intellect and speak down on this level because I, I can speak on levels that are just so rich and so deep that people just wouldn't comprehend it. Uh, the, the humans on earth couldn't comprehend the understanding that I have, but every understanding has a foundation. And if I, I speak on foundational things, uh, people can understand and uh, there's depth in simplicity and Jesus proved that uh, by sharing parables which were pretty easy stories to comprehend but the spiritual depth and meaning in the parables was deep and so um, people um, should benefit from your faith um, you, you shouldn't find out about uh, the, uh, for example, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be listening to teachers on creation and the facts and, and the discoveries and the archaeology behind the creation story in order to convince atheists and people who believe in evolution that they're wrong. And many Christians do that. They want to enter into arguments and it does, it does come from a good place. I, I don't believe many Christians want to just have arguments. There's, there's a lot of Christians who sincerely care uh, for, for people that they know, friends of theirs that uh, atheists and uh, believe in science and some people study creation and uh, teachers on YouTube in order to form an argument that will convince their friends that Jesus is the answer one way one way to convince your friend is that Jesus is the answer is just to love him in an extraordinary way. When, when it's his birthday to give him a birthday present, when, when it's his wedding anniversary, which you mightn't find out from a guy, but when it is, uh, you know, give him a present, um, to have a listening ear, to ask him about his worries, his, his issues, the trials, the troubles he's going through, to have a listening ear, to have advice. Try to be a real friend to that person, a giving, supportive, uh, servant sort of friend to your friend. And let your love, let your unconditional love for him convert him. Let him know that you love him all the way to hell. Uh, let him know that you're going to be his friend and you're going to be his best friend and you're always going to love him despite if he ever comes around to your way of thinking. See, people, people don't like to think they've got to change to be your friend. People like to think that they can be themselves around you. And one of the sad things about Christians is they want everyone to become Christians and they're so focused on their friends becoming Christians that they're not focused on loving their friends for who they are. You'll do a lot better for people loving them and accepting them for who they are. If they're gay, if they have got a sexual orientation towards loving men, meet their boyfriend, meet their husband, love their husband, hug, hug their husband, do good things for the husband, be a servant to the husband, love them as a couple. Even if uh, gay marriage, even if uh, two males being together, is offensive to your faith, even if even if 
that disagrees with what you believe and you believe marriage is between husband and wife and rightly so it is. But that doesn't change how they feel. It doesn't change what they believe. Take some time out just to love people. Just learn to accept people where they are. Learn to embrace people for who they are and what they're doing and their lifestyle choices and their behaviours. Learn to love people where they're at on their journey. Not everyone can be advanced. Not everyone can know what you know. Not everyone has got your experiences, has uh, sat down and been tutored by the people that you've been tutored by. Not everyone uh, understands things through the lens that you have in life. So just be loved to people. Learn, learn, draw close to Jesus. Learn, learn what it's like to be loved by Jesus and just demonstrate that love to other people. So I'm going to uh, pass it on to uh, Princess Diana. So this is, uh, this is Princess Diana. I, I was just um, sitting back uh, in this couch uh, in heaven uh, in the uh, picture here on the video. Mary is just another level of, of wisdom and, and grace and love. You may not understand, but love always finds a way. Love, love, love is, love is the most extraordinary, powerful force in the universe. And someone can really hate and despise you and really be frustrated with you and be envious of you and jealous of you. And they can show their distaste and they can show their disdain. They can be brutally rude and obnoxious and And yet love can wear them down. Your love can wear them down. And love, love, is, love is a weapon. And it's got to come from a good place, like uh, choosing to love your enemy has to come from a place of God. It, it shouldn't come as something that you weaponize. Okay, so I'm going to love uh, this person and I'm going to turn them around and it's like you're loving them to make them change. There's a uh, misunderstanding uh, in scripture because people don't understand where it says uh, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your en enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. By, by this you'll be pouring hot coals on the head and people think that, well, if they're kind to the enemy, it's going to torture their enemy. There's a tradition in uh, Jewish villages where a man or a woman is to stay up all, all night and tend a fire and build a lot of coals. In the morning, he put the coals on his head in an urn and took fresh coals around to each of the women and gave them some coals to start their fire in the morning. Otherwise, the women would have to uh, scratch sticks together or however they did it in those days and, uh, and start their own fire. So this person who stayed up all night was the biggest blessing to the village and uh, that's what hot coals on your head, pouring hot coals on your head actually means in that verse. So uh, when, when, um, when the person says, 
if your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. If your enemy is hungry, give him a feed. Uh, you'll turn him into the best person in your village if you do that. That's what the verse means. It doesn't mean uh, be a blessing to enemies in order to torture them. And because of the false teaching, because of the misunderstanding of that verse, that's what many Christians feel that they should do to their enemies. That they start being nice to their enemies, hoping their enemy will suffer. And I've seen it. Uh, I've been in heaven for a long time before Facebook, but I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen how people argue scripture after scripture and hurt each people, run knives through each other and uh, then say, God bless you at the end. as so though they're blessing their enemies and people call each other names and are really rude on Facebook. And then uh, they say, God bless you as though they're blessing their enemy because uh, uh, it says in scripture to bless your enemies. Uh, Jesus said to bless your enemies, pray for your enemies, pray for those who spitefully use you, bless your enemies. You're going to have an effect on people, especially your enemies, if you love them from a sincere heart. And the way to uh, get a sincere heart is has it, have it modeled to you. Knowing Jesus, having a relationship with Jesus, having him speak to your spirit and understanding him is a tremendous way to have love modeled uh, to you. Um, until I came to heaven, I didn't understand what a male love is. I didn't understand love from a male. I didn't have a good relationship with my father. And when I met Jesus, he, he was the best, he was the best man I've ever met. And he loves me like a husband. And when you uh, draw close to Jesus and you experience his love, when you get experience with the love of Jesus, it allows you to copy his sort of love. And his sort of love is understanding, it's compassionate, it's patient, it doesn't envy, it's not jealous. It, it doesn't insist on its own way, it actually insists on your way. It's patient, it's kind, it's giving. Imagine being that to everyone you meet, giving, compassionate, kind, generous, patient, not insisting on your own way. So many people on earth insist on their own way or want their own way, have, have got a laser uh, focus on what they want to achieve and They'll walk over or use anyone to get what they want. And, and Jesus, Jesus wants you to be loving and caring and considerate and kind and giving. There's, there's a famous salesman who, who said, work out what people want and give it to them and you'll be as rich as you want to be. There's, there's no, people, people assume that you're going to lose being giving. People assume that if you're generous and you're kind and you're compassionate with your giving, that you, you're, going to, you're going to be poor. But people who are generous and kind and giving with their finances, these are the sort of people that Jesus blesses and gives more finance to. There's a verse in the Old Testament, he who lends to the poor lends to the Lord and the Lord will repay him. And 
imagine that. Imagine, imagine giving money to someone poor and the Lord repaying you the money. You could just continually give to the poor because the Lord will continue giving back to you. If you believe that principle, if, if you read this and, and you believe that's true and you took it for a test drive and it worked out to be true every time you gave money, money come back. Uh, two days ago, uh, yesterday, Matthew gave $60 away that we mentioned in part one. Well, $150 came through in his ministry today. You can't outgive God is a cliche that Christians use, but do they actually believe it? I understand uh, I'm talking about giving here and it's, it's a sensitive subject with many Christians because uh, so many people ask for money, but I understand that people are cautious when, uh, when people talk about money. But do people really believe you can't outgive God? Because if people really believed it, they'd be giving. I know uh, to some people, money isn't the answer. I, I know uh, to someone who's caught in an addiction, giving them money to finance their addiction isn't a lasting answer. I know uh, giving money uh, to a heroin addict uh, for the next shot of heroin, it won't really be remembered by him. All he wants is, is the money for his next heroin shot, but you still can be giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Do you, do you know, do you understand that you don't have to uh, give to your church. You don't have to give to a Christian ministry. You can, you can give flowers to the girl at work on her birthday. You can see a, uh, a woman in in um, in your workplace come in a new dress, and you can go out at lunchtime and buy a scarf that suits it. And just bless her with it. You know, when you give her that scarf and when she wears that scarf, that, that'll that do more for her than taking her to a church service. When you, you draw close to Jesus and Matthew is tremendously close to Jesus, you just love people. And... People should benefit. The world should benefit from your relationship with Jesus. And giving is just one aspect of love. Giving is just one uh, portion of love. Being a servant to people is, is another form of love. Laying down your life, serving. And this is why... I have tremendous respect for Prince Philip and, and the Queen uh, have totally dedicated their life to, to serve, um, to serve the uh, people of England and, and the Commonwealth. Service, ser serving people, laying down your life and serving people, being a servant is just a beautiful attribute and it's just, it's so fascinating, fascinatingly modelled by Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, everything he does is service. And I'm not sure if you can, well, you, you may not really experience it, but when, when you think of the Queen, that's all she does is she serves people. And the idea that someone can be powerful and in charge and be a person of service is just 
a remarkable thing. You you may be in America. You you may not understand what the Queen does and uh, how how many things the Queen does, but can you imagine uh, famous movie stars uh, dedicating half their life to serving other people? Can you imagine uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook um, spending half his life serving charities and and using his technology to better charities instead of serving himself and serving his financial needs for his company. Jesus said it really well, if anyone wants to become great, better than he be a servant. Uh, Matthew models it well, uh, this, this series. Um, he I'm was serious. He he uh, he was told uh, that uh, uh, Princess Diana and Mary Magdalene wanted to mentor him and was going to start to teach him things. And he was told uh, that that they weren't so much going to teach out of the Bible; they were just going to speak to him. Then he went to a stage where the Holy Spirit inspired him to do this book and realize that this book may go on and on and on because he just loves hearing us, but going to the expense of recording a video and editing uh, the manuscript and then doing professional editing and publishing the book, that's service to you. That's service to you, the reader. So Matthew, is first of all a servant. He he doesn't make any money from his books. He 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 not one of his books out of sixty books has ever turned a profit. There, there's not one book that he spent six thousand dollars on producing that actually made six thousand dollars back or more. He hasn't made a profit on one of his books. Uh, he just spends money producing books and gives them away basically for 99 cents. And once every three months, he gives them away for free. He's, he's a servant. His whole life is serving the body of Christ, trying to teach them and equip them and build their lives in intimacy with Jesus and trying to teach Christians how to be holy and live a life that's set apart for God. That's his purpose, to serve. And you would do well to read his books and come to understand Jesus like he does. And as you grow as a Christian, uh, if you can understand the joy that is is found in service there's so many ways people can benefit from your faith there's so many expressions of love that uh, you can share with people there's so many different aspects and facets of love there's so many dimensions of love like a diamond has many facets and uh, reflects the light in so many ways the the spirit of love can be reflected in so many dimensions but i contend that the best way to learn how to love exceptionally is to know jesus uh, in 1 John, it says God is love and uh, God is tremendously loving. And I speak a lot about Jesus, but I'm close to the Father too. And he's just got a terrific son. And I encourage you to uh, draw close uh, to Jesus and make Jesus uh, the first in your life and 
learn how to demonstrate and live like him. The Apostle Paul, we mentioned before, but um, the Apostle Paul said twice in one of his letters, imitate me as I imitate the Lord. And that meant that the Apostle Paul was imitating the Lord. And it is possible, it is possible to imitate Jesus and to be like Jesus. And that's what your friends at work, that's what your friends uh, in life need to experience. They need to experience Jesus in you. Just like uh, I'm speaking through Matthew, people need to experience Jesus in you, speaking through you. People need to hear words spoken by you that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. You need to be in touch. Well, you don't need to, but it's helpful that you're in touch with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives you words to speak. Jesus wants to come inside your hands. Jesus wants to put you on like a pair of gloves. He wants to be like gloves on your hands. He wants to give people money through you. He wants to hug people through you. He wants to speak to people through you. He wants to have a second coming on earth and manifest himself through your life. And people of all sorts, gays and lesbians and witches and warlocks and Illuminati members and masons and police and pastors and drug addicts and pedophiles, everyone, no, no matter how terrible you may seem that they are or seem what their lifestyle is, every one of them should experience Jesus in you. And the worse they are, the better you should treat them. And it may be abhorrent to you uh, mentioning the word pedophile. Imagine a, a known sex offender who's offended multiple young boys or multiple young girls. It may be abhorrent to you to have coffee with that person and hug that person and put your arm around that person. But that person more than anyone needs love and to be embraced and to be accepted and to be forgiven. I know I, I, I may be speaking of a, a, a level of love. I, I know that I may be speaking uh, about a level of love that you're not uh, attuned to, you're not used to. Uh, you're not uh, conversant with, you're not uh, comfortable with. But there's room for growth. There's always room for growth. Uh, I, uh, I vibrate at, at, at a very high frequency of love now. And uh, I've had 20 years in heaven in earth time, but 400 years in heaven time. And I've just become like a female orgasm of love. I've just become like the essence of love. And so I'm just speaking from my essence and I'm saying that love is the answer. Yeah, the Beatles, the Beatles uh, had a song, all you need is love. And that's true. That's, that's all the world needs. Love will, love will solve everything. If you've got a conflict with a person, loving that person may not solve the conflict. People, people are envious and jealous and rude and selfish. Though, you know, people, people will do anything to earn more money or have more possessions. And people will walk over you, take you to court, sue you, uh, rip you off. They'll, they'll do anything to increase in 
finances and increase in possessions because they think that that's the answer. So loving people who are rude and cruel and, and want to rip you off financially, loving them may not have any effect, but it'll have an effect on you. It'll have an effect on your attitude. People are going to be people. People are going to be who they are. I, I can't say... I can't say for sure that you loving your enemies is going to change your enemies, but I can say for sure it'll give you a better experience. It's, you know, you see certain uh, materials where you spray water at it and the water just flows off. Um, if you become like a retardant uh, material, People can spray hate at you and it'll just flow off. And it's good to become like that, not to be a person that doesn't have emotions and feelings. Uh, uh, people used to say terrible things in the press about me when I was living and, and they really hurt. I had emotions, I, I was an emotional person and they really hurt some of the things the press said about me. And I, I'm not taking it away from you. It, you as a human being should be able to feel your emotions and experience hurt and experience pain. But turn that hurt around and pray for the person. And, and don't just say one prayer, forgive the person and God deal with the person. But put them on your prayer list fast and pray for that person for, for, for Jesus to overwhelm them with love and, and, and change them and do a fast, do a, do a one week fast for that person that someone would come into their life that's a Christian and start to powerfully, powerfully affect them. Call out to the Lord, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Call unto the Lord. Pray for your enemies. That's what Jesus meant when he said pray for your enemies. He, he didn't mean uh, forgive them and repay them for, for what they did. He, he meant committing them to prayer and fasting for them. For, for them to have a change in life. So uh, learn to love. Learn to be an expression of love for people. And that's how you, uh, uh, that's how people should benefit from your love. You, when, when you're loving people, you'll be a light. And uh, as, as Christians, we, we need to, or you need to shine your light brightly. I'll hand it over uh, to Prince Philip. Well, it, uh, this is Prince Philip. I, I uh, am amazed uh, just sitting here listening uh, to, to uh, these um, uh, women uh, and uh, I'm just amazed what has been said, Matthew's just going to go and prepare a coffee uh, for himself. He'll be a couple of minutes. But we'll come back and I'll have something to say. Thank you. 
As, as a prince and as a servant to the people of uh, England and the Commonwealth, I spent a lot of my time meeting strangers and we would do official ceremonies and open buildings and uh, announce uh, certain things for charities. And we we're always uh, doing official engagements and I was the prince and I, I was with the queen and I was highly revered and highly respected by people. A lot of people wanted to meet me. And I'm this popular person. They've all heard about me. They've always wanted to meet the queen. They've always wanted to meet me. And suddenly this person who, who is a nobody, just a, just a baker, just, just a, uh, photographer, just a publicist or an advertising representative. Uh, they've known about me all their life and they've known about the Queen all their life, but I've never known them and I don't know them. And probably if I saw them in a year's time, I wouldn't recognise them. But I'm their hero. I'm someone important. And they want to shake my hand and have a conversation with me. And it takes a lot of patience. It took a lot of dedication. It took a lot of love to actually have the time of day for total strangers who, who want to talk to you about your personal life and intimate details about your life. Now ask all sort of weird and creepy questions. And that was my way of loving God, that was my way of loving my country, is to spend all my time with strangers, uh, doing official uh, functions. So I understand more clearly than uh, many people, anyone who wants to be a great must be a servant of others. I was great and I was servant uh, to everyone. And uh, I, I really revere Jesus uh, in such a high level because he's just at another level of service. And I watched uh, Mary Magdalene since I've been up here in, in uh, heaven uh, weeks. I've been up here 20 weeks. And I watch her doing official functions like the Queen of England. And uh, I watch her and she... She and Jesus are like the Queen of England and the husband. Jesus and Mary Magdalene are like the official couple in heaven. And I just watch them doing the same thing. And the difference is uh, with heaven and, and, and with Jesus, everyone in heaven has met Jesus before. And Jesus has a relationship with everyone in heaven. So it's at another level. It's at another level because he's got relationship with people. And uh, you can read Matthew's other books. If, if, if you read 
uh, his books, you'll find out about how people meet Jesus every week or every couple of weeks in heaven and uh, Jesus mentors them. But uh, you can find that information out in other books. But Jesus knows the people of heaven, but he's doing the same thing as me and my wife used to do, the queen used to do. And he's a servant. And when Jesus talks to you, it's so emotional. He, he speaks to your unasked wishes. You may be thinking something that you want to ask him and he just starts to speak about the answer. He's so supernatural. But he's a servant. He just goes around heaven serving people. And I want to uh, share with you that the key to life is, is, is loving and serving people. These these pop stars, these these pop stars and movie stars that you look after, look up to, they're not really people deserving of looking up to. Some of these film stars play in two films a year, but they just play a role. They've got all this wealth, but so many of them don't do anything for anyone. They just live a luxurious lifestyle. That wasn't the same for me and the Queen. We had finances, we had luxury, but we were working. I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you fully understand how to have a conversation with a total stranger who adores you how to catch up. They've got a whole life that they've lived watching, reading, finding out about you. You know nothing about them. They're asking you all sorts of informed questions that they know about you. And you're stuck for words about asking them for questions. So what do you do? And so you, you, I had to have a extremely good general knowledge of all sorts of trades and and specialities in trades. So that when someone told me they're a butcher, I could ask them if they're a commercial butcher or they're just in a butcher shop. They're in a butcher shop. How, how many years have you been doing that? What uh, is your favorite meat that you like to work with? Um, what's your favorite cut? These are some examples of, of, of the questions are asked. You know, Jesus doesn't ask anything of you that he hasn't already done and he isn't already doing. He doesn't ask anything. He doesn't, I, I'll repeat that, Jesus doesn't ask anything of you that he hasn't already done or isn't already doing. It would be really great. I, I know Matthew's really advanced and, and is a tremendous uh, individual and so Christ-like. So it's easy for him to understand me saying these things, but it may be harder uh, for you to comprehend. Life is so much better when you're not selfish. Life is so much better when your life is a life of service. Life is so much better when you haven't got any crying, selfish needs in your life. Life is so much better when you're looking at other people and you're not looking at yourself. Life can be so much better when you trust in the promises of God and you don't rely on your own flesh and your own intellect and your own desires. Can you live a life like that? Can you live a life that's not selfish? Can, can you live a life that, uh, 
that uh, wants to serve others, that wants to love others, that uh, a life of giving, a life of self-denial. Let Jesus say, uh, if any man wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Do, do you believe it? Matthew's got a whole book based on that uh, verse. Because that verse is very deep. Uh, if, even in Christian circles, especially in Christian circles, pe people don't understand the life of soft denial. Some of the priests I've met have spent hours studying the word of God, hours plumbing the depths of scripture in order to share it with their congregation and help their congregation grow. Soft denial. That's something that people have little understanding of. Denying yourself. Not spending all your money on yourself, not going after all the best brands in the world, not uh, trying to be anyone special. Just being unique, just being yourself, denying your financial lusts and uh, desires and just uh, living a sedate, down-to-earth life. Taking up your cross, uh, letting people know you're a Christian, uh, sacrificing your time, sacrificing your finances, uh, giving, uh, paying the cost, paying the price of, of being a servant and a Christian. I really paid the price. I, I retired a few years before I died, but uh, I really paid the price. I, I really paid my dues. Some people look at the Queen and and myself, and they look at the millions of dollars that goes to the throne each year, and they, they say, that's a waste of money. Well, someone else do it. Who's going to do it if someone else does it? Who's, who's going to have an official person open their building? I had a glorious life, but my life, the the... The week that I've spent here is is just just can't even be put in the same ballpark. It, it's like uh, you've got the minor leagues and the major leagues, and, and then you've got heaven. Heaven is just uh, another dimension, and I'm enjoying each day. People. People should know you for your love. Matthew uh, knows a, a few people at, at, at the church that he goes to. Uh, he's, he's known as an encourager by, by people he knows. He's been going to a ch new church for five weeks. But he hasn't got any real friends uh, in person in He's got a couple of carers that look after him and he's developing relationships with them, but hasn't really got any real friends. So he can't really affect lots of people. Um, he, he has an effect on shopkeepers and people's staff in, in restaurants and stuff that he visits, but he hasn't got uh, ongoing friends uh, that he can affect. So he puts all his energy into books and writes his whole heart into books and uh, puts his whole heart into videos and uh, uses his life to mentor and equip people in the body of Christ to become intimate with Jesus. It's, it's, if his life was full with friendships and relationships, he probably wouldn't have the time or the energy or the inclination to teach as well as he does. But you have a life. You have people in your life. And you've got a chance. Another thing that people don't know is the Holy Spirit is quite happy to spend 20 years 
developing a relationship with a person before they're saved. You, you, you may not understand this. This may be new to you. But some of your friends, the Holy Spirit wants to save in 10 years time. Not now. Some of your friends, he wants to bring another Christian into their life in eight years time. And that person lead them to the Lord. Sometimes you're just a stepping stone in their breakdown of their relationship with Jesus. Uh, for, for some people, they've got to have a lot of barriers broken down. Sometimes you're one of the people breaking down some of the barriers and your effect and influence in their life is just one effect and one influence that's going to eventually break down enough barriers that they can be saved. Don't uh, put the whole onus of saving your friends at work and friends that you mix with. Don't put the whole onus of bringing them to the Lord on yourself. If, if you had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if, if you had a friendship with the Holy Spirit and an and ability to ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit, uh, you're the one that's going to lead your friend to the Lord or someone else going to do it in the future. And if he tells you it's someone else in the future, just relax and love on them. Just love them and love them and love them. Do you know, even if a person does go to hell, even if one of your friends is an agnostic or an atheist and they do die and go to hell in 20 years, do you know that the 20 years of you spending time and loving them and loving on them was enjoyable for them and it's worthwhile even if they do go to hell? And I know it's a sad feeling having a friend that you care about going to hell Jesus and, and God don't like people going to hell and it breaks their heart too. But it, it's time for people to get their eyes off themselves. Even, even, even despairing at someone you love going to hell is still a selfish thing. It's still your own pain and your own hurt. Please understand that God has got more love and Jesus has got more love than you. Please understand that it breaks God's heart more to see anyone go to hell than it breaks your heart. And be the solution. Be the solution on earth. When someone needs a drink, give them a drink. I hope... I hope since we've talked, I hope since you've seen uh, video one and uh, you, you've seen part one and uh, you see this part two, I hope that your attitude to homeless people changes through the course of this uh, video series. I hope as you, you pass a homeless person on the street that you can stop and say hello. You can ask them if you can buy them a drink. You can ask them if they need any finances. If you're a person who hasn't got a lot of friends, you've got friends in homeless people. A homeless people will, will speak to strangers. They'll be surprised that a stranger stops. And uh, I'm afraid that I, I didn't have a lot of interaction uh, with... with uh, People are homeless on the streets, but I did have interactions with staff in charities that uh, did charities for the homeless. So I did meet homeless people in, in the food kitchens and stuff, and they were happy to talk and converse, and they're very interesting people. Uh, many homeless people have, have lived a number of lifetimes and... Uh, Who should benefit from our faith? Uh, everyone. Do you know, uh, people who are atheists can be very interesting people. They can be very thoughtful and loving. 
Matthew heard a statistic years ago that there's a higher atheists have a higher percentage of um, marriage um, marriages staying together than Christians. Well, that's a better form of love. Don't think it's your job to save people. It's your job to love all men as you love yourself. Jesus said to love others as you love yourself in the same way you love others. Lay your life down for other people. Be humble. Be teachable. Be a person that can be taught. Be a person who's open to being taught. When you uh, listen uh, to this video series or when, when you read the book that comes of it, don't just put the book down and say that was a good book. Come back to the book, highlight the book, reread the book, study the book. There's so much insight in what I'm saying. There's so much insight into what the girls were saying. You can't just digest it in one sitting. There's so much wisdom. Do you know, wisdom is a precious thing. I uh, grew up uh, studying and uh, and putting uh, myself to, to, to work, reading books and speaking with scholars and debating scholars. And with all the information that I learned, with all the knowledge and the wisdom I possessed, I took one look into Jesus' eyes and I saw information and knowledge and wisdom that eclipsed mine forever. I realized that Jesus is the source and all information comes from him. And when you look into his eyes, you see eternity in his eyes. You see the creation of the world in his eyes. When you look into his eyes, you see that he knows you and he loves you. He not only knows you and loves you, he sees your potential. Some people would say, well, I died, my life is over, but my life has just begun. There's so much I, I want to teach and I've, I've uh, had enough of doing official duties and uh, opening buildings and greeting strangers. But I've, I've been looking at Mary and Jesus do what me and the Queen did all our life. And I've seen a love rise up in me. I love to do the same thing and continue in service. And I'm so happy to be uh, spending time with Mary uh, doing these interviews. I'm so happy to have Jesus by my side. You know, there, there's no end to Jesus. If, if, if you like Jesus, you're just the best person. And I encourage you uh, to, to, to draw close to Jesus. I encourage you to develop intimacy. Matthew's uh, got a book, Seven Keys to Intimacy with Jesus. I encourage you to get that book and take the time to develop intimacy with Jesus. So I'm going to go now and uh, leave a few minutes uh, for Michael to speak. And uh, it was wonderful speaking to you, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I hope that um, I hope that you can reflect on my words and and uh, decide to live a life of love and service of other people. God bless. So this is Michael Jackson. Uh, I'm not sure about you, but uh, I've had my fill for the day. Uh, 
I'm I'm amazed at what Mary said. I'm I'm amazed at what Diana said. I'm amazed at what Philip said. Part of me just says I, I just want to close with uh, take some time to have some therapy. Have take some time to learn to love yourself you, you know it's from your capacity to love yourself that you get the capacity to love others even people however even people who don't love themselves can have a tremendous love for other people and can show other people love, even hurting people who haven't got high opinions of themselves can be beautiful, sweet and loving and charming people to know. But take some time to get some therapy if you need to and learn to love yourself. Chief among things is take the time to Get to know Jesus, get to know the Holy Spirit in a way that you can speak on his behalf and you can be led by him. Get to know Jesus, get to know God, the Father. God uh, is authorizes this conversation and he's very happy with this and uh, God is never upset when the focal point of of the uh, book or, or the video series is on his son jesus his son reigns and uh, as long as people are praising jesus and loving jesus god is like retired and uh, he he loves his son ruling heaven and uh, so don't be disappointed if we focus on Jesus in these discussions. You live in a very doggy dog world. So many people are bound up with selfishness and looking after themselves and keeping up with the Joneses. And in order to have a good effect on other people, you've got to lose that. You've, you've got to lose your love for the things of the world. You've got to lose your love for everything that is of the world. A scripture that uh, Matthew uses uh, in many of his books uh, is um, is this scripture I'm going to uh, share um, this this scripture defines what uh, holiness is or the opposite of holiness and um, I want to share it and talk about it uh, because it's relevant to what I want to say. So 1 John 2, 15 to 17 says, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Do you know, people live in this world and they love the world and everything it offers them. People are envious and jealous and selfish. 
and they run after all the things of the world, all the possessions of the world, all the knickknacks, all the precious things. They run after them. And, and yet John says, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. And 90, 98% of people love the world and the things that it offers them. And, and Matthew doesn't. And Matthew doesn't. And that's what sets him apart. And that's what makes him different. Because he, he doesn't love the world or the things that it offers him. That's why he can spend $150,000 on books and give them away. That's why he can just buy T-shirts of his own T-shirts to witness to other people and spend $3,000 on them. But that's why he can have no possessions because he loves people more than he loves the world. For when you love the world, you do not have to love the Father in you. There's so many people listening to this. There's so many Christians in the world who love the world and they don't have to love the Father in them. So you can't argue with Scripture. This is what Scripture says. Do not love the world or the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have to love the Father in you. You can say you love God. You can say that you're in love with God. You can say you're in love with Jesus. But if you're in love with the things of the world, you're not. The love of the God isn't in you. And it can't possess you because while ever the world possesses you, there's no room for God. And that's what uh, is the key to making Matthew so precious is because the things of the world isn't in him. He's, he's not... He's not full up with the world. He's totally empty of the world and he's full up with God. And uh, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. That's eating, dancing, sex, movies, physical pleasure, craving for everything we see. That's your brand name clothes. That's your technology. That's your Instagram. That's your Facebook. There's cars and houses and clothes and possessions and a pride in our achievements and possessions. That's pride in the fact that you're a CEO or you're a sports instructor or you're, or you're a coach or, or you're such and such or you're a dentist or you're a doctor. A pride in who you are in the world. And a pride in your possessions, that's keeping up with the Joneses, being happy with what you possess and you're proud of your possessions. And that's why people wear brand name clothes and Nike and Adidas. They, they wear those clothes to show other people, I've got the money, I can have a Nike shirt. And they pay expensive money. They, they pay precious money for, for a shirt that's, made for 50 cents and they pay $60 for a shirt to wear a Nike shirt. And it's because they've got pride in their possessions. That's all it is. These are not from the father, but from this world. And the world is fading away. Uh, one day you're going to leave this earth. And the only thing that's going to be eternal is, is the riches that you've built up in heaven the, the uh, treasure that you've stored in heaven. And very few people store treasure in heaven. Very few people spend a lot of money and store their treasure in heaven. All of the money Matthew's spent in books is in heaven. All of the riches, the riches he has is all the relationships that people have changed, all the people who've had changed relationships with Jesus because of his books. All of that is treasure in heaven. Uh, all of the effect that his books have had on people is treasure in heaven. But this world and, and, and your possessions and your job and, and the people you love, that's all fading away. It's all going to be gone one day. And this world is fading away with everything people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. 
folks it's it's too late it's too late this world is entering into darkness it's time to come out of the darkness it's time to come and uh, serve the lord it's time to be a difference it's time to be a servant and be a leader and be someone who loves other people it's time to stop living for self it's time to stop serving yourself it's time to look out for someone else that rather than look out for yourself looking out for number one is of satan and there, there's a reason there's a reason for education there's a reason for for getting a job and there's healthy things in building a career and building a family everything can be healthy in moderation but people should be looking to other people people should be looking to heal the world people should be looking to heal other people to bless other people to love other people and it may seem boring to you it what we're talking about may seem boring but uh you can hear from prince philip that he's just finished a life of service and he's already thinking of going into a life of service again why would he do that if it's not fulfilling why would he do that if it's not important why why does jesus spend his life serving other people why because that's the epitome of life that's that's a life of giving is the best life so i encourage you learn how to give learn how to love learn how to make this world a better place well that's all for me and i'll hand over to matthew so this is matthew i hope uh, you enjoyed uh the second uh part two of uh wisdom from beyond the veil uh tune in uh to uh see uh more of uh, these teachings and uh right uh now as uh, uh matthew uh uploads this he's going to um make this a playlist that you can go and find on his playlist called called wisdom from beyond the veil and uh that was michael speaking so michael was back speaking in my voice um, so i encourage you to um, like this uh, if you liked it uh, uh, i encourage you to write a comment if you enjoyed it and uh, please join my channel if uh, you want to subscribe god bless